All right, thank you for coming. I hope you can, ah, I think you can hear me loud and clear. Um, so uh, today is about, uh, today's talk is about Kubernetes in hybrid environments. And we, we do have quite an ambitious plan, um, ambitious plan because we want to walk you through a few open source projects that we are working on for Kubernetes and Istio. And I feel very brave today, so I'm also planning to do a live demo. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so let's, let's, get, let's get started. Before we start, uh, can we have a quick show of hands to see how many of you are familiar with F5 networks and F5 Big IP? Just a quick show of hands. Wow, okay, so pretty much, <laughs> pretty much everybody, that's good. Um, so uh, multi-cloud, what? People mean different things when, when they talk about multi-cloud solution and we have a huge percentage of customers interested in that and developing multi-cloud strategies. Uh, most of the time, uh, uh, people refer to multiple public clouds, but uh, many times as well, people include uh, private cloud environments uh, and uh, also SaaS solutions. So for, for today's purposes, we'll probably go with that second definition. So there are many different reasons you, you would choose uh, each kind of uh, environment. For, uh, for, for example, with private cloud, uh, on-prem or in colocation, typical reasons would be enhanced security or as a need a customer can have for uh, layer two and layer three networking controls, this kind of thing as an example. And again, as I mentioned, uh, it does seem that a uh, huge percentage, so 85% of companies have a cloud, a multiple cloud strategy. And, uh, and containers, of course, uh, help a lot with that uh, because they are portable across uh, these kind of environments, uh, so both pu pu public and private cloud environments. And uh, you do have quite a, a large variety of uh, different development environments and platform as a service environment, which we are briefly going to cover, uh, including OpenShift and Cloud Foundry. Uh, but mostly today is about, uh, about Kubernetes and uh, some of our projects in that space. So what are uh, drivers for uh, multi-cloud adoption? Um, it can be a buyer leverage uh, for, uh, for different departments and, and teams. It can be uh, increased availability and disaster recovery. It can be many things. And it turns out that it varies quite a bit depending on company size. Um, so uh, as you can see from, from this graph, looking at the, the red part, uh, so optimizing SLA is a big thing for uh, smaller companies under 100. Um, uh, but they are a bit uh, less concerned with buyer leverage, and it's quite the opposite for uh, large companies, 10,000 or more. They are uh, uh, very concerned about buyer leverage and maybe a bit less uh, in proportion about um, optimizing SLAs. Uh, so challenging, uh, so we are, uh, we are going to show a bit some, some of the common deployments that we see with customers today and uh, when they move workloads to, to various clouds and running Kubernetes in, uh, in offers such as Google Container Services and Azure Container Services or, or in Amazon. Um, one, of, one of the common problems is that uh, the public cloud providers came with uh, all kinds of different uh, feature set and uh, different, uh, different services. So, uh, uh, the investments you make into, into this kind of integration is not really portable across, across environments. Uh, and you also, you end up uh, very often with inconsistent uh, policies between, uh, between these different environments, and that, of course, can create uh, security uh, vulnerabilities. So uh, one of the typical deployments that we see is our, uh, with our devices being uh, uh, deployed in a colocation facility because you have uh, a good latency and access to, to all the different clouds, to, um, to Google and to Azure and to Amazon, to Oracle as well. Uh, so that um, uh, 
Uh, that's something we see more and more. And this kind of deployment allows you uh, as well to centralize your, uh, your security policies. So uh, it allows you um, to, uh, um, uh, to replicate your app services across environments, so make your workloads really portable and ensure that you apply uh, the, same, the same security policies to, to them. So some of, uh, some of the benefits I, I, just, uh, I just mentioned are, uh, are right there as well. Um, so, um, so again, what, what it would look like is uh, a five sitting on, uh, on a color interconnect location can be Equinix or something similar, or in a data center, and this kind of deployment allows you uh, to centralize your uh, traffic management, but also your security policies. And specifically related to Kubernetes and one of the open source uh, projects that we are going to talk about today that is called the F5 Container Connector, allows you, uh, if you deploy your Kubernetes uh, workloads, regardless of whether you deploy Kubernetes on-prem or in Amazon or in Google Cloud or Azure Container Services, uh, we have a, um, uh, a um, a project, so this is a five container connector that runs natively in Kubernetes and will uh, monitor actively the different services that are running and create, uh, automatically create uh, the necessary configuration on the five devices sitting, for example, in a colo location or in your data center. So that allows you uh, to dynamically populate everything on the five devices so, uh, so you can make sure that even though you, can, you, you have Kubernetes workloads de deployed in different clouds, you always have the exact same traffic management uh, or security or DDoS policy apply, uh, uh, applied to them regardless of, of that. So in terms of, uh, in terms of more, more technical terms about, uh, about how this works, uh, it basically the F5 container connector uh, runs as, it's, a, it's an ingress controller, and the F5 Big IP in this deployment uh, will be the, uh, the ingress, the Kubernetes ingress points. And uh, something, uh, something, so this addresses, uh, so this solution addresses um, um, uh, the ingress into Kubernetes environment. Uh, however, we also uh, want to address uh, traffic, uh, uh, traffic between the different microservices themselves. So this is a, another uh, project that I'm going to, to mention uh, right now, and I'm going to, uh, uh, to do a quick demo as well. Um, is, uh, uh, is, it's basically, so it's called Aspen Mesh. It's basically a um, F5 supported uh, dashboard with Istio uh, at its core. Uh, so, uh, on top of everything uh, that Istio is offering you, uh, so uh, Grafana and Jaeger to look at your application tra traces, and we are going to see that in the demo, we have another component uh, that is part of, uh, of our Aspen Mesh solution, and that is called uh, Istio Vet. It's an, it's an open source project, and it basically allows you uh, to identify misconfiguration because, be, between user deployments in Istio and, um, and Istio components themselves. So you can uh, identify uh, all kinds of uh, version mismatches, and uh, it can do as well uh, predictive uh, analysis uh, based on what happens with other deployments and other customers. So basically, it allows you to make, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it helps you to avoid making mistakes uh, that can prove costly. Um, so, um, are you ready for a quick demo of, uh, of Aspen Mesh? Great. So my Kubernetes clusters are, uh, are deployed in Google Container Engine, but as we said, it, it shouldn't really matter for the solution. Um, so right now, I'm going to, to switch to, hopefully you can see my screen, yeah. Um, so so this, is, uh, this is what it looks like. Um, I have deployed a very basic app, the book info application in, uh, in Istio. And you can see right now, um, this is my, my Aspen Mesh dashboard. Uh, I can see the various components of my app, but I do not have any requests. 
So I'm going to, to go ahead and uh, generate some, uh, some traffic to that, uh, to that booking for application. And we will see in a second here, you can see I already start to, to get some requests in there. So uh, if I go now and uh, I go to look at uh, Grafana, for example, Sorry. Uh, all right, so you can see uh, uh, global success rate, 100%, uh, no, uh, no 500 errors, and you can, you get all, all, the kind of, all kinds of indicators about how the deployment is, is going. Uh, I'm sending traffic specifically to the product page so I can see uh, what, what exactly is happening there. I only get uh, 200 responses, so that's all uh, nice and good. And I can, I can do more, uh, more, more than that, of course. I can uh, also, uh, also from the Aspen Mesh dashboard, I can go to, uh, to Jager and uh, I can act, uh, look at, uh, at the actual traces uh, from my app, hopefully. Internet is working, it is. So uh, the service I selected here is the product page because that's what I send traffic for. Uh, so you can see that um, it's actually working. I get all kinds of uh, useful information. Um, so I can go and, and explore exactly what, uh, what happens in my environment. So again, this is, this is the app we, we just uh, sent traffic to. So very basic, uh, very basic app, but helps make the point, hopefully. Uh, any, um, so I think we, uh, we have all, our entire product development team, so we can, uh, I think we can open for, uh, for questions a bit early, and we'll be happy to, to talk to you afterwards uh, if, if these projects are, uh, uh, are of interest. And also I included, at the end of the slides, I included uh, links to all, these, uh, to all these projects that I mentioned so uh, Istio Vet, we would very much uh, welcome contributions to, to this. You can, uh, right now there is a, a number of, um, we call them vetters. So all kinds of, um, for example, mesh version. This is the one that uh, can detect uh, mismatches between versions of your user deployments and, um, and uh, uh, Istio components. Uh, there are quite a few others um, that uh, that are interesting, and of course you can uh, contribute uh, uh, contribute uh, yours as well. So I think we can uh, we can open for for questions if you'd like. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and again, we have the entire <laughs> the entire hymns here. They can they can add uh, more to it. So basically, it works by monitoring the Kubernetes services, and creating the entire configurations of virtual servers and pool on the F5 device. You're actually and, tools. Correct, correct. So the container connector talks using REST APIs to big IPs sitting somewhere. Again, it can be Equinix or it can be uh, your data center. It can be. A five big IP sitting somewhere in the cloud, uh, provided that the container connector can talk uh, to the management interface using REST APIs, so it creates all this dynamically, and it can work in two ways. Uh, um, very often, um, we just um, uh, we just end up having the pool on the big IP being created with a node port. But you can also work, we did a lot of testing, for example, with Calico, and you can uh, have uh, BGP peering. If you use Calico BGP, for example, BGP peering between a five big IP devices and the Kubernetes nodes. So therefore, in, in that scenario, uh, your pool on the F5 device will actually contain uh, actual pod IP addresses. So you get kind of more, more visibility on, on this. And as nodes come into the cluster and get removed from the cluster? Exactly, exactly. Exactly, and, and we rely on, uh, on the Kubernetes uh, health uh, monitors, so you never are in a situation where uh, the pod is not actually healthy and ready to receive traffic, but it's considered 
good by the F5, so you don't have that problem. Did I answer your question? Yeah, I mean, we could talk later. I have some additional questions, but I won't take up any more. <laughs> sure. Does this assume that the connectivity already exists between clouds or between, like, sort of on-premise or colos and, and clouds, or is that somehow also being established with this? So uh, you, you mean by, by the container connector? Uh, like the VPN or, or? Yeah, so so if you, if you go, for example, uh, uh, with uh, Equinix, let's say, you have two options. So you can have direct connectivity to the different clouds, and that we, we tested that, that works great. So you have Google, you have Oracle, you have Azure, you have Amazon, so you can use that, but you don't really have to. For example, for your development workloads or test workloads, nothing stops you from, even if you have your big IP in Equinix, uh, from establishing IPsec VPN and just uh, route some of your traffic uh, to save some money uh, over IPsec VPN uh, to, uh, to, uh, so you, to, uh, to Google Cloud or to Azure or Amazon. Is that a manual step or that's outside of the, the... There is a lot of automation to establish uh, VPN tunnels. There are uh, quite a, a few good projects showing how to do that uh, on, uh, on GitHub. I can, uh, are you interested in, in which, which public cloud provider are you interested in? Yeah, okay, so I, I'm going to show you right away. Uh, it's very easy to uh, actually Google for it. Um, so if you look at, so that there is, there is uh, quite a bit of automation that, uh, that you have available there, F5 IPsec. Uh, so this one is, uh, is pretty good, um, a pretty good example. And uh, it, really, uh, it really does everything for you, uh, including high availability for the big IPs, um, so I would encourage you uh, uh, to use that rather than doing it manually. Of course, you can do that. But does it does it answer your question? So, so, so the role is, so uh, Big IP will be the ingress point into, into regardless of whether uh, your apps are deployed uh, on-prem or in Kubernetes running in a managed Kubernetes environment or uh, uh, anywhere else, it allows you uh, to, to get, so traffic to these environments goes through the Big IPs, therefore you can apply all kinds of traffic management and optimization and DDoS protection or web application firewall pro uh, protection. So you can use any F5 features that you are interested in, regardless of whether your app is running or your workload is running in a public cloud, uh, Kubernetes on-prem, or Kubernetes in a managed environment, such as Google Container Engine. It just allows you uh, to, um, to consolidate your, your policies in this way and use whichever F5 uh, feature is of interest to you. And again, it can be a uh, web application firewall or DDoS protection or any kind of um, uh, feature you, you are interested in. No, so, uh, so it depends if you, if you, are, uh, if you are using um, um, uh, direct connectivity, for example, from Equinix, you will, you will have a layer to connectivity directly to the cloud. Uh, uh, if not, you can, you can use IPsec VPN to, uh, to establish uh, uh, connectivity between Big IP and, uh, uh, I don't know, Google VPN gateway, something like that. Or, Other questions? Okay, I think. <laughs> thank you very much. And uh, don't forget to talk to us, and thank you. <laughs>